Whitney Houston's powerhouse vocals and her meteoric rise to stardom were always larger than life. Tonight, we go behind the scenes with first-time director Angela Bassett, whose new movie, just like Houston herself, filled with talent and tragedy, is stirring controversy. Here's ABC's Nick Watt. Everyone has a favorite Whitney Houston song. This is mine. I want to dance with somebody. With somebody who loves me. And everybody, it seems, has an opinion on the choices she made in life, the man she loved, the way she died. Making a film about Whitney Houston isn't easy. This is the first time anyone's tried. Go away! Open the door, Whitney! Whitney, you need to protect the voice. We all know what Whitney Houston looks like, we all know what she sounds like, and you have to recreate that? Yeah, so I had to study even in the lip syncing. I'll be done for you, baby! What shapes does her mouth make, and what are her hands doing? I'm your baby tonight! Yaya Da Costa, previously seen in Lee Daniels' The Butler, and America's Next Top Model Cycle 3. Time to be Whitney plays Houston, one of the most successful female recording artists of all time. It definitely was a daunting task. Angela Bassett, who famously played another giant, Tina Turner, strutting her what's love got to do with it stuff, she directs this diva biopic that premieres on Lifetime. So for your directorial debut, you could have picked an easier topic. You think? How you do it? Bassett and Whitney knew each other. They starred together in Waiting to Exhale in 1994. I was just, you know, I was excited about it. Having worked with Whitney before and, and you know, and loving her as I, as I do, as I did. It's my baby. Don't mess with my baby now. <laughs> we met here at the House of Blues in Los Angeles to talk about the film, which focuses on Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown. I love you, Bobby. Falling in love. You are the one I love. The movie is, in one sense, startling. I came out of this movie feeling sorry for Bobby Brown. Not everyone is all bad and no one is perfect. I felt sorry, I felt sympathy, empathy for him. And up until this point, I haven't felt any of those things for Bobby Brown. Amen. New edition had launched Bobby Brown with hits like If It Isn't Love. You have girls screaming and clawing for you at 13 and you see how you mature. As director, as actor, we began to think about those things and we looked through it through those prisms. Before he went all bad boy when he went solo. Every little step I take, his biggest hit. You know what's funny? Bassett met him in 94 while working with Houston on Exhale. When you actually met him, when you were actually in a room with him, was he the bad boy? No, he wasn't bad at all. He was, he was charming, he was bright, he was respectful, he was in love with his woman. A woman who sold over 200 million records and was at that time at her peak. For the movie, one of Houston's old label mates, Deborah Cox, recorded those songs in the studio. Then Yaya Da Costa took them on stage. Asked for it to be played out loud, so even okay. the audience that we had, all the extras, could hear Deborah Cox singing Whitney's song okay. and me singing at the same time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what do you say? When they met, Bobby was just 19, Whitney was 26. <laughs> I'm getting mad. Oh I just hope it's not Bobby Brown. Whitney's mom, Sissy, is portrayed as dead against the union and is dead against the biopic. A representative for Sissy Houston told ABC News in a statement that they are very disappointed that Angela Bassett never personally reached out to them and that we cannot help but question the veracity of a story about Whitney and Bobby's personal relationship. She claims that none of you sort of spoke to anybody who actually knew Whitney and that you're telling a tale that you don't really know. A friend said to me it is an honest portrayal. It may not be truthful because who can know each and every truth of each and every situation? Dionne Warwick, Whitney's cousin, has seen the movie. Oh, she really appreciated it. She loved it. She said, thank you. Thank you. This is good. For a woman who sang so much about love, she was unlucky in it. Her relationship with Brown disintegrated into a mess of alleged domestic violence and addiction. Their demise was played out 
in public. Come back to the feeling that people have that your husband is controlling and that you can't get away from it any more than a, an abused wife. It's a magnet that pulls you back. The magnet that they're talking about is my love and my protection for him. Houston's public shocking end nearly three years ago, aged 48. She drowned in a bathtub, drugs in her system. That's not even mentioned in this movie, not even in a postscript. Why steer totally clear of that? A, a full, rich, complicated life. There's no way to do that in a television movie, and that's not a story that I was interested in telling. The story she wants to tell is about a woman who could make you feel like this with her voice. I Will Always Love You, here in that iconic Grammy performance, one of the best-selling singles of all time. I'm Nick Watt for Nightline in Los Angeles. You can catch Whitney on Lifetime on January 17th.